before we start this video, I should warn you, this is the dirtiest episode of My Life as a Teenage Robot. Sorry about that, I couldn't resist. While I remember liking this episode, I don't think I've seen it since my original viewing in 2015. I'm looking forward to revisiting it, so let's get started. The episode starts with one of my favorite gags in the show. There's a line of cars getting crushed at a junkyard, and a panicked man runs to one of the operators and explains that he has personal items in one of the cars that are about to be recycled. While the personal items left in the cars normally get recycled into new personal items, this man is a dynamite salesman. Dynamite salesman! Dynamite salesman? Dynamite salesman? Dynamite salesman? Dynamite salesman? This is such a goofy way to start an episode, and a very specific conflict you'd never see in reality. Jenny swoops in to save the day. Nobody called for her, so I have to assume that she was spying on this random junkyard. She gives the man back his TNT, but she was unaware of a second bundle. The TNT explodes in her face ruining her paint job and shooting her through piles of garbage. As you'd expect, this happened on a day where the entire school is obsessing over how good they look and smell. Even Brad is, oh my god, what is he doing? Maybe this video's opening gag can be taken either way. Everybody seems to want to be invited to Don Prima's party. If you don't remember Don Prima, he was the guy that Jenny almost got to first base with in Party Machine. Things didn't exactly go as planned, and Jenny ended up feeding him drywall. Jenny is still as socially awkward as ever, and when she tries to act cool, she ends up falling into a locker. Luckily for her, two of her classmates block her embarrassing accident from Don Prima's sight. How sweet of them. Oh god, it's the Crust Cousins. I was enjoying my four episode long break from them. They aren't trying to help Jenny avoid an awkward situation, they're trying to make sure that Don doesn't notice her at all. For the second time, Brad is trying his best to give Jenny opportunities to get with Don Prima. He notices that Brit and Tiff are where Jenny used to be, but he doesn't know that Jenny is in the locker. This doesn't make any sense for a few reasons. You definitely hear the locker crash open. The inside of it would even amplify the metallic noise. Brad could easily see the locker open behind Brit and Tiff, but he didn't question it. If you go back to where Jenny falls in the locker, Brad disappears from the frame. Maybe this was intentional. Maybe Brad can teleport whenever he wants. Is Brad Dr. Manhattan? A small plot hole, but I thought it was funny nonetheless. It doesn't even matter, because Jenny sticks her head out of the locker so Don Prima could see her. Something odd I noticed is that Don Prima acts like he's only heard of Jenny. He was at her party just a few episodes ago. Teenage Robot wasn't able to be released in a chronological order because of the way that Nickelodeon handled its release, and this episode is one of the victims of that mismanagement. To persuade Don Prima not to invite Jenny to his party, they point out her personal hygiene and they leave. I'm surprised nobody reacted up to that point. In Ear No Evil, everyone immediately started laughing at Jenny because of her ears. Maybe they were afraid the two episodes would be too similar. Jenny is understandably upset about not being invited. Tuck suggests getting Nora to fix her, but apparently Nora already tuned her up recently. I'm glad they wrote Nora off as an option, because what they do instead is much more fun. They happen to be next to a garage, so they go in and ask the mechanics if they'd be willing to help. Just like in real life, the mechanics are scary looking and seem to be mean. However, these mechanics are more than willing to help. The sequence where they repair Jenny is probably my favorite sequence up to this point. They make all sorts of machine work look like a day at the spa which is an artistic accomplishment by the creators of the show. They do Jenny up like a car, with air fresheners and all. This design of Jenny is beloved by fans, and it seems to be the inspiration for popular fan character Chaos Jenny. Jenny looks so good, even Tuck compliments her, followed by a car. As soon as Jenny returns to the school, 
Everyone starts complimenting her new paint job. She catches Don Prima's attention, and he promptly invites her to the party. Much to the dismay of Britt and Tiff, defeated, Britt and Tiff decide to head to the most dangerous part of town to find someone who goes by Mudslinger. The Mudslinger is a writer who's known for getting the dirt on anybody. He's an expert at doing this both metaphorically and literally. They convince him to try and ruin Jenny's new paint job. He's well versed in the world of trash. You could almost call him a very dirty man. On her way to the party, Jenny hears an old man cry for help. She's designed to help people in need, so she heads right to him. As you'd expect, it's the mudslinger, and he drops a dumpster full of trash on top of Jenny. Only a fraction of the garbage actually gets on Jenny, which she is able to scrub off before it ruins the paint job. He runs away and starts shooting ink at Jenny, even dumping a huge bucket on top of her, just for her to narrowly escape. He has a posse of garbage trucks on the roofs of the buildings, ready to dump their load on Jenny. This also fails. He can somehow control the birds in the sky and convince them to poop on Jenny, but Jenny was able to block this attack. She almost fell into a pitfall with a pigsty at the bottom, but she's blessed with the ability to fly. The mudslinger is concerned, and with no options left, he threatens to slice open a puppy's jugular. It's a close call, but she saves the poor puppy's life. Unfortunately for her, it was a sentient stink bomb, and it ruined her paint job all over again. Jenny isn't sad about her ruined paint job. The only emotion she has left to feel is anger. Slowly walking towards the mudslinger, Jenny slams her hammer weapon against the brick wall to her side, shattering it over and over. Afraid for his life, he confesses that Britt and Tiff hired him, but she still slams her hammer and heads towards him. He confesses that he was also never invited to a party, and just as it looks like Jenny is about to liquefy his brains against the wall, she passes the invitation and invites him to go instead. You guys can say what you want about an inhibitor stopping Jenny from killing people, but she was definitely planning on killing the mudslinger. If he didn't admit to Britt and Tiff being behind it all, this episode wouldn't have been made. A blood-soaked Jenny Wakeman would probably be too much for children. The mudslinger crashes the party, inking everyone, and Britt and Tiff are shamed by their friends for inviting him. On their way to the party, Brad and Tuck notice Jenny moping around on a lawn. Instead of going to the party, they decide to stay with her, and they play around with water. Out of nowhere, the mechanics from earlier show up and join in on the fun. This turned a sad ending for Jenny into a more positive one. She knows that they're having a better time than the Crust Cousins are, and she's happy enough to know that. That's The Great Unwashed, and great it is. This is a phenomenal episode, and it might be one of my all-time favorites. I have no idea why I didn't revisit this episode earlier. I remembered it very well, but I just didn't put the time into re-watching the whole thing. Sure, there's weird inconsistencies. The fact that Tuck was even going to a party with Brad goes against the events of Party Machine, especially if canonically comes first. That just doesn't matter to me. It never has. This episode is wholesome as hell, and I love it. On top of that, the Crust Cousins got screwed over by Jenny, and I celebrate whenever that happens. I totally recommend that you watch this episode again if it's been a while since you watched it. You won't be disappointed. Do you guys think this episode is as good as I do? Tell me about it in the comments below. I've been your narrator, Andre. Thanks for watching. For watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a rating. If you want to reach us, leave a comment. Or check out our other platforms. Links are in the description.
Hey, Brad. 